Welcome to a short update on the Windpark financial model template from efinancialmodels.com. This model calculates the financial feasibility for a new Windpark project. We have two main worksheet, uh, worksheets. One is the summary sheet, then the other one is the financials uh, sheet. On the summary sheet, we have a mix of the output of the model, with the, with, which gives you an overview of the total uh, financials or gives you a financial summary. And on the other hand, we also have the assumptions in there. Uh, we have here, for instance, calculation of the lifetime profits. Then we have calculation of the project metrics, uses and sources of uh, funds. Then tables to give you the forecast for the first uh, 10 years. And then it goes on with more tables. We have here one section with a sensitivity analysis to find out what's the impact if you change some of your assumptions. And then also all the general, general assumptions listed here, here below. On the sheet financials, we basically have the forecast on a yearly basis for volumes, uh, prices, then the operations and maintenance budget for the year. We can uh, project how much are the costs. We use inflation factors to increase this cost over time. Then we have financial statements such as the income statement, balance sheet and cash flow statements, fixed asset schedule, uh, debt schedule with two, uh, two tiers or, or two types of loans, uh, senior and junior. Then we have a sheet for the forecasted financial ratios and then also a calculation of the unlevered and delivered free cash flows. How can you work now with this template? You can start by entering the specifications of your project, how many megawatt you intend to build. So let's say this is a 20 megawatt park. Uh, you can enter <coughs> number of turbines. Um, maybe it might be a bit bigger. <coughs> this figure is just for cosmetic or statistic purpose doesn't really influence the model but it just gives you the full uh, the full picture then you can enter what's the cost per megawatt so let's say it's just a bit uh, higher so we'll just multiply by it. <clears throat> the number of megawatt installed gives you the total initial investment cost the capital expenditures at what efficiency will you operate so let's say <clears throat> we operate this at 25 uh, efficiency and then we'll calculate how much is the annual energy uh, produced. Then this park can operate for a specified <coughs> number of years. Um, for instance, we can say this park, we expect that uh, it will be operational for 30 years. This model goes up to, in the maximum uh, model version, goes up to uh, 50 years. So we can just say, <coughs> we can take any, enter any number up to 50. Of these years, we also should specify, spe specify how many years we expect or the offtake agreement is valued. <laughs> For the offtake agreement, we can sell this as the pre-agreed uh, price. And once the offtake agreement <clears throat> is, um, is over or anything, any amount not covered in the offtake <clears throat> um, or any volume which uh, would not be covered in the offtake agreement, we could then sell at the market uh, at the market price. So you can just enter your pricing assumptions. And then also here, uh, you can say how much of the energy produced should be sold via offtake during these 20 years and how much should be sold on the market. So in this case, what we're going to do is we sell everything uh, via the offtake agreement for a period of uh, of 20 years and then afterwards all the energy produced produce will be sold at the market price and you can see so this is the, this is the volume uh, split and then you can see in terms of pricing you see that there's a drop of in pricing because here we get the better price and then the price um, the price of the market would be would be lower and then after 30 years, the, par uh, the lifetime of the park will be will be reached. So as of year 31, we'll not expect any, any more revenues. So this would be reflected in these assumptions. You can also um, add some other factors, including the inflation factors. If you think that your price prices are going to, to change, then you can correct it here. You can also enter the 
normal inflation to be accounted for for the costs. We should first make sure that also the rest of the assumptions are updated. So we have here now the project costs. Maybe there are some additional costs we have to add. So <coughs> we we add the any additional cost we should cover and this would be expensed uh, up front. Then we have to say what's our financing structure. So <coughs> this was for the previous uh, project size. So now what we should do is we should check through here that this is something we can expect uh, reasonably to obtain from a bank. So let's say the <coughs> term loan A is around 50%. So we can just increase that amount until we receive um, a calculation here of about 50, this is a bit too much, so let's say 21, yeah, around 21, maybe 22, okay, let's say 22 million, and then here we can get something in addition in the term loan B, let's say this would be a bit more, Okay, and then basically all the rest would have to be financed via equity. Or if there is some, some in the first years, if some parts of the park are already operational, maybe we can even use some operating cash flows. But let's say we're going to finance it like this. So if here the debt schedule entered, you can then also enter the, uh, the interest rates. Let's say the for loan A, this should be a bit cheaper for loan B. Um, actually, these are quite high interest rate <laughs> rates, so let's make it a bit a bit cheaper. And what we then also can do is we can go to the debt schedule and further fine tune, um, basically the uh, the drawdown or also the uh, the repayment. The last we need need to do is to shortly check here if any other assumptions <coughs> need to be updated. Uh, networking capital, receivables, payables. I won't change them, income tax rate, and then also your <coughs> operations and maintenance uh, budget. Uh, here we can enter the cost per megawatt, and it gives you the um, basically the costs uh, per year. So <coughs> just feel free to enter any amount which makes uh, sense. Then also at the end of the lifetime, we should also count for commissioning costs. So we can enter an assumption here also on a pro per megawatt basis. basis. Uh, maybe there's some salvage value, we can then deduct it so that actually at the end the netted uh, cost will be accounted for in this model. So we have updated all assumptions, now let's check what's the overall picture of our model, especially let's have a look at the IRR. So we can see we should get an IRR unlevered of around 10%, levered it's nearly, it's basically double, um, double of it. Uh, we can also check uh, NPV, if someone is interested, payback uh, periods. All these figures, they are calculated in the tables um, on, this, uh, on this sheet. So you can shortly review it to see if that um, makes sense. If you, if you can, basically, the, you can follow the calculation and see if where the figures come from and see if you agree with them. If not, you can either change the assumptions or you could also write the formulas in this model. Uh, let's say this metrics they look good, so that's what we can expect. Then what we also want to know is um, which of the assumptions are the ones which have the most impact. For this we were going to update our sensitivity tables. I'm This is not updated at the moment, so I'll have to change this to calculate options automatic. Just take uh, one, one figure, and now you've seen it's updating here. So I can run <coughs> this on the unlevered IRR, and basically this tells me that the efficiency factor, um, which we have entered um, <coughs> above here, if I change this, this has the most impact on the, in this case, on the unlevered IRR. I can also change the assumptions, I can see what's the impact on the levered IRR. So I hope this video gave you a good overview what this financial model template can do for you. I hope this was useful. Thank you for your interest and for watching this video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and visit our website efinancialmodels.com. A link to the model template is included in the description below.
Thank you for watching.